extra large is available in cayenne, moss, and aubergine. We didn't have six and a half in the plum, so I brought you black. But I really want plum. Do you think moss is pretty? You know, I, I don't know, lady. Why don't you just pick a color, please? Dave? That's Dave Johnson. He never struck me as the kind of guy who'd go get small. Wow. So the decision to downsizing takes the pressure right off, especially money pressure. We live like kings. We're dying to move. We're really strapped. You want my advice? Lease your lands where you want to be. In leisure land, your $100,000 translates to $12 million. Wow. I just got another diamond bracelet. Pretty nifty, huh? OK, let's go for it. Nervous? Little. I love you. I love you, too. Today, you will undergo the permanent and irreversible procedure known as downsizing. All clear. Just frantic. You've got a call. Paul, don't be mad at me. Please don't be mad. I can't leave my family. I can't leave my friends. And I'm sorry, Paul. I should have been thinking more about myself. Thinking about yourself? I'm five feet just tall! As large as you can, please. So, Michelle, people start asking me, how do you pronounce, how do I pronounce your name in a film? I said, no plan. No not plan. Not plan. But it's okay. But Americans, Americans pronounce it. They can't say no. No. It's okay. They can't say win. They, they, they can't say, say win. They can't say <laughs> So now I just talked to Alexander and uh -huh. asked him about how did he discover you because he did. Well, first of all, congratulations Thank for you. such a superb performance in downsizing. Thank you. You made me laugh. You made me cry. And by the end of the film, I'm like, she's going to win. <laughs> at least a few words for Best Supporting Actress. I mean, that's just my early prediction, okay. but okay. you, you can just ignore it <laughs> me. Anyway, great job in this film. Thank you. Can you talk about the process of auditioning for this role, the role of Not Man for Mr. Alexander Payne? Mr. Alexander, Alexander Payne. Payne. Hey. <laughs> Were you nervous? Uh, well, I was sort of I I after I first read the script I I felt so electric I felt buzzy because I when I first read the script I didn't know that there was going to be a role for a Vietnamese woman in oh. there I had no idea You didn't say anything no, I read the script out of curiosity because I, I love Alexander Payne's films and I was just curious what he was going to work on next. So I read it and was blown away because the story is so creative, but then there's this character, a Vietnamese woman that we've never seen in a movie before, ever. A Vietnamese activist dissident. Dissident. I mean, that's even more amazing. Yes. You know, yes. Mm hmm So I... I chased after this role. I wanted it very, very badly. I went in and I read for the casting director. I sat in a waiting room with other Vietnamese actresses. We all looked just alike, <laughs> you know, and we all wanted that role. So I'm so glad that um, I was able to have this opportunity because Alexander Payne is one of the great American film directors. I mean, so what went through your mind while sitting next to these these other Vietnamese actresses going to go in and audition for the same role, the role of Mok Lan, plays the uh, you know, opposite of Matt Damon and Christopher Waltz. Well, did, did they talk about it? Did no, share it did no. Uh, I try to be very respectful when I'm in a waiting area. I, I try to be quiet so that other people can prepare and just focus and concentrate. But I always wish, internally, I always wish the other person well because what we have to recognize is that we're each different. We all have, uh, we're all unique and we bring a certain life experience into things and, and we have to value that. So if I see another Asian woman or a Vietnamese woman, I want you to do well. <laughs> you know, I'm rooting for you. This so, is so rare it's so world. rare. So yeah. whoever gets the job, I hope you do it well and I hope you knock it out of the park. That's it. Well, you have a job. <laughs> You did such a fantastic job playing this role. Can you talk about how did you prepare for the role of Plan? Were you worried about speaking a certain way with a certain accent? Because to me, that is real. We don't speak perfect accent coming 
directly from Vietnam. Mm -hmm. There's no, no way, and you can't pretend. No. I remember when I first came here at the age of 10 and 84, mm -hmm. working English mm -hmm. with heavy accent. Mm -hmm. So that's normal. And you were lucky because you were 10. It's a little bit easier. easier. If you come over as an adult, it's very Worse. difficult. Oh, yeah. Very difficult yeah. because... Parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah Tai Lu nó cứng Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you, know? you can't, so you can't say mình, it. You know, we yeah. can only understand that, okay, bố mẹ mình không có cơ hội để mà học tiếng Anh với con còn trẻ. Mm -hmm. Khi mà lớn rồi thì khó, mới phải đi làm nuôi con làm sao bây giờ để đi học 4 tiếng một ngày, 20 tiếng một tuần. Preach, preach, sister, preach. You know? <laughs> Yes, yeah. so I think it's very important for American audiences to get to see a Vietnamese woman who speaks this way. We don't have to be ashamed of our parents because that's very admirable to come over here into a country with no support system. You have no money, you don't speak English, you're learning as you go. You have to work so hard because you have children to support. So you don't have time to go to school. You don't have time to like read a book and learn proper Perfect. English. Right, yeah. right. You're doing the best you can, and that's a very admirable thing. So I'm very proud of my parents, and I'm sure you are too. Absolutely. So I'm very, uh, I'm just so proud. And and. Nhưng mà làm sao Hồng Châu có thể chuẩn bị cho cái vai của Ngọc Lan? Can you talk about a little bit like? researching this role and uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I like to work from the inside out. Mm -hmm. I don't work from the outside in. Mm -hmm. So I don't focus on the accent. I don't focus on the disability. Um, I don't focus on trying to be funny mm -hmm. because if you're being real in real life, people are funny without even knowing yeah. that they're being funny. Yeah. So hopefully if I do my job right, you don't see all of the different parts and, and the nuts and the bolts. You see just a seamless, clean human being who's very complicated, who's flawed, who's uh, lovable, who's uh, not lovable at times, all of those things because that's what human beings are. We're complicated. You got a chance to work with the two of the greatest actors, Christopher Waltz and Matt Damon. Hong Cho got nervous hồi hộp khi mà đến quay very first time cái scene với Matt Damon hay không? No. I, he, we met on our very first day of shooting because he was working on Born. Oh. He was he's a very busy man. <laughs> so workaholic. He, he's a workaholic. He's I think he's been working for like he had been working for like two years straight with like no break, you know, because he was doing the Great Wall and then Born, and then he was jumping into downsizing. So he's a very busy man. But I, he was so nice, and he told me I saw your audition tape, and I thought it was so beautiful. <laughs> On our very first day of, of meeting, very supportive, very supportive yeah. and I felt immediately at ease with him. Our very first day of shooting our scene was the scene in the church, yes. and there was no lines in it. So. When you don't have lines, it's almost more difficult mm -hmm. because you just have to be the character and you don't have a crutch to, like the lines are easy because you can, you have stuff to say, stuff to do, but when you just have to be the person, you have to know them really well from the inside out. What do you love most about the role of Ngọc Lan? Hồng Châu, thích cái phần nào nhất, cái cá tính tốt về cô Ngọc Lan? She's a person who has been through so much but she doesn't have any self-pity. She doesn't say, why me? Life is so unfair. This is so unfair to me. Instead of focusing on herself and wallowing in any sort of self-pity or e sense of ego, she takes that energy and she puts it outward and she helps her neighbors, she helps the people who don't have family, who don't have a support system because she recognizes that they're just like her, even though they're a Mexican person, even if you know they are not related to her, she cares about them. And that's a lesson that we can all take with us. Heart of gold, with God and her, <laughs> and her yes, mind. Yes. With the Bible next to her all the time. I love it. I love it. Praise the Lord. Well, great job, Hong Thank Chow. You, so God. happy for you. Thank you. Hope to see you soon. I know this can put a pretty big dent in anyone's self-esteem. But downsizing is about hitting the reset button. Start all over. I have allergies. Wait, wait. I'm going to take off my shoes. You may find yourself open your eyes in another part of the world.
world is filled with things to see. And you may say to yourself, my God, what have I done? That woman is really sick. You help her. These are the people that we should be helping. Something very big is happening. Something top secret. Why did I downsize so that I could be here right now? I finally have a chance to do something that matters. You think we're in the normal world, and then something happens. Oh my God. And you realize we're not. Same as it ever was.